This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an amazing online learning community. The link in the description down below, if you click it, the first 500 people are gonna get two months free. Stay tuned for later in this video to hear more about it, but I'm hyped that they sponsor it. I'm a big fan of their service, but let's dive right in into the Surface Go review. Okay, so right before school started for most people, I made a video called the best back to school laptops. And I featured laptops of many different price points. On the high end, we had like the Dell XPS 13 for um, in the $1,000 price range or 1200 bucks. And on the lower end, we had the Surface Go, which is marketed at 400 bucks, but this model that we have here is closer to 600 or 700 when you add in the keyboard and everything. Still a really great deal though. And I featured this as one of the best laptops for students. Uh, creatives that wanted a portable secondary laptop and a lot of you guys wanted a review on it So basically in this video I'm just gonna tell you guys my thoughts on this product as a whole and if you should pick one up if you're the right market for it So to start it off the surface go is the cheapest laptop in the surface lineup of 2018 uh, So what you have here is you have a 10 inch basically a mini version of the surface pro almost uh, and it packs a lot of the similar features, similar build. It's a very industrial build. But what I should say is that you're buying this for, first of all, the Microsoft name, but also for a lot of the things that the computer provides that others don't, like the premium build, a good screen. I'm gonna talk about more of it later, but what you're not buying this for is top of the line specs. It just doesn't have that. It's optimized pretty well, so it still performs really well. But for uh, anyone that's like wondering and is gonna comment like, oh, the specs suck or whatever, like the specs are pretty decent, but they're not out of this world, especially for the money, you could probably get higher specs on other models that would then lack a lot of the other things that make this a good overall computer. So I felt like I should note that. But starting out with the build, it's a very industrial build. It's in this 10 inch form factor, which means that you could definitely use this as a tablet. Whereas I feel like some of the bigger Surface products, it's not as easy to use as a tablet. This one is so tiny that I feel like it's really the perfect tablet size. Uh, it's an all metal build. It feels really premium and like heavy and nice. Uh, on the side here, you have your headphone jack, you have um, the Microsoft charger, and then you also have USB Type-C, which you can use to charge this as well. It doesn't have a ton of ports, so you should note that. If you're a student looking at this computer, who I really feel like this computer is marketed towards, uh, I don't know how many ports you're gonna need, but you might need to pick up like a $40 USB Type-C hub uh, to get some of your ports back. On the back, you have the little kickstand, uh, and that just pushes out, and it can go to a various amount of heights. Actually, there's a lot of different height settings it can do, which is really nice, and then that just clicks back into place. On the bottom, you have the little connector for um, the keyboard cover. So the keyboard cover does not come with the Surface Go. It's an additional like $120 add-on, which definitely brings up the price of this, but it's kind of essential. I feel like you can't really use the Surface Go without it, so it just clicks right on into place, and then you can use the little kickstand on the back and then you have like a little laptop set up. It's not the most comfortable on your lap, I'm not gonna lie, this definitely digs in a little bit, but on a normal desk setting, or even on your lap, it's okay, especially with all the high adjustability. Obviously, it can't do everything great because it is a tablet and laptop combination, so the lap is definitely where you'll see like that first sacrifice. In terms of the keyboard cover, it's this really nice Alcantara interior, it feels really nice. I have the cobalt blue color with the complimentary surface pen that is magnetic and goes on the side. Overall, this is a really small package. Uh, when you have the keyboard and everything on it, it still feels really small and light. It can still really fit in your bag. So hardware on this uh, device is out of this world, especially for this price range. You're looking at other competitors from like Acer or other companies that make uh, laptops at a similar price range. They just have like plasticky and not amazing builds. This definitely has a really good build. When you dive deeper into performance, um, you're definitely gonna see some issues here. So if you're a student who I really feel like, as I've already said, this is marketed towards, I think you're gonna be fine. Word processing, streaming, all that stuff works like a beauty on here, right? It's like butter, it's good, it's perfect. Uh, if you're gonna do any video editing or stuff like that, it's gonna be kind of tough. I would not buy this laptop if you were like a heavy Premiere editor, but I feel like you already know that. Uh, I would buy this laptop though, if you wanted a secondary device that you could maybe edit some photos on stuff like that, this will be able to handle it. Natively, it runs uh, Windows 10S, but that can be upgraded to Windows 10 Pro. Windows 10S basically just means that you can only download applications from the Windows App Store. Definitely not actually a big deal for students because I feel like that's all you really need. You got the word processing, you got Google Docs that you're probably using for a lot of your documents anyways, and that's all online. So performance is not amazing, but it's not terrible either. A lot of people were saying that it's like glitchy. I haven't had that with my model. This is also the uh, mid-tier $550 model. So with the $400 model, there could be more latency issues. Again, on this model, I don't really feel that. 
In terms of the laptop experience with the keyboard, it's great. The keyboard has a lot of travel. The screen is great. This screen is honestly one of the biggest selling points of this device. The screen is sharp and crisp. It does have pretty large bezels surrounding it, but it's just a really, really nice looking display. It gets bright, it gets vibrant. Looks great, I'm really happy with the screen. So you have um, touch control and then you can also take notes, which I think is great because you can end up like folding back the device and then using it as like a tablet uh, and taking handwritten notes in class. So this really gives you the versatility of using like a keyboard and taking type notes and then switching over to take like handwritten notes, the formulas, math, etc. This honestly could be one of the best computers for students just because of that versatility alone and it's small enough where it does both things really well. Uh, so that's like in terms of the laptop use. In terms of battery life, again, it's a pretty similar story here. It's pretty good. It's not exceptional, but it lasts uh, for a day's use of note taking and streaming and stuff like that. I find that it lasts, and it's like 80% brightness when I'm doing that. Some of the other things that you should note about it is it has a rear camera and a front facing camera, so you're kind of covered for like FaceTiming and stuff. Um, also, I've noticed that the trackpad is a little bit small, it takes a little bit more time to get used to, but it's really clicky and it provides like a satisfying feedback. Some trackpads on other Windows devices are a little sketchy. This is definitely not, it's really good. Uh, and I just found myself like loving this device, like finding excuses to take it with me. Like I'd be like, oh, well I might have 10 minutes like in the car, I may as well, may as well take this with me. Just because it's so light, it's so portable and you can get a lot done in it. It's also kind of cute like the size it's like a little mini service pro and I'm really happy with it overall like the media consumption experience with the speakers and the screen and everything it's just it's pretty good you could definitely watch content on here and I love the size and the form factor of it because I feel like it's perfect as a tablet but it's also big enough for computer stuff like you could do split screen and it's a little small but it's more than okay so I just feel like this is a really a solid option. Obviously, it's like that $700 price tag once you add the $130 keyboard and the $550 um, model. It does get a little bit pricey and then you have to start evaluating other options, but I feel like this is pretty unique on the market. I can't really think of another device like this that packs a really premium build, a really good screen, the Microsoft name, uh, and a portable form factor. I can't think of another device that does that as well as this one does. And I find myself using it all the time. So what I would say is if you're a student, and you're looking for a device and you're even thinking about this, you probably should just go for it. I would recommend the mid-tier model, the one that I have here. Um, if you're a business professional who doesn't do a ton of intensive stuff, just like word processing and stuff like that, and you want a portable travel device, I would also recommend it for you. The only person that I really wouldn't recommend this to is anyone that's looking for like a beast of um, performance and stuff like that. You're not gonna find that here, but for everyone else, this is a really good laptop, especially as a secondary device. It's really solid. I was impressed with it. It's a quick one, I know, but uh, I'm really happy with it. And if you notice that the video looks higher quality, because a lot of you guys have been saying that, and that means so much to me for real, it's in part because of Skillshare. Skillshare sponsored this video, and I want to tell you all about it, because I think it's a great resource for a lot of you. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 17,000 creative business technology and lifestyle classes. A premium membership gives you an unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their field, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work that you love. It's also more affordable than many other learning communities at only $10 a month. And I've been using a lot of the courses to get better at animation and cinematography and videography. And the one that I'm loving right now is by a guy named Ryan Booth, who's a really, really well-known cinematographer and videographer. He does a lot of documentary stuff. And he basically shows a room and he shows how he would set it up uh, with lighting and to make it like really have like a nice feel and a high quality feel. And he does a great job. And I've learned so many lighting techniques just from his course. And there's many other courses like that on the platform. So if you're interested in Skillshare, which you definitely should be, I've been a fan of their product for a really long time, even before they sponsored the video. The first 500 of you that click the first link in the description below are going to get um, for two months free of Skillshare. And then after that, it's only $10 a month. So I really feel like you should invest in yourself, make yourself better in creative fields. And just in general, it's a really great product. So thank you to them for uh, supporting the channel. Uh, thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos uh, on a bunch of other tech products, including more laptops and smartphones, etc., etc., subscribe right here so you don't miss that. And then check out my other content right here. We have a lot of awesome stuff coming. Bye.